Starting from today, guys, we're going to be able to vote for the next Fusion Champion skills, the May Fusion. Now, we're going to review every single one of the skills, what we can vote and what we should vote, of course, depending on what are our needs. Plus, I want to cover a couple of different things. Guess what? We have a Summon Rush starting tomorrow, guys, with a 2x on Sacreds. We didn't have something like this in like 2,000 years, okay? But we're going to talk about this in just a second. And of course, the 10x champion that will be on the list, which is meant to be super, super OP. So yes, you've heard it right, guys. Friday, which is tomorrow, we're going to have a 2x on Sacreds. Now, together with the 2x on Sacreds, we're actually going to have a 10x on this new uh, faction unity champion for the Sacred Order. Palmand Moon Sword. Now, initially, I kind of like looked at the kit and I'm not that impressed. Now, he's meant to deal insane damage. That's the main thing with him. Uh, I will have a video dropping on him today, guys. Keep an eye for, uh, for that. But basically, if you are able to bring in some solid Sacred Order champions into the team, it's actually going to be pretty, pretty crazy. We'll attack all remaining enemies with any surplus damage if the initial target is killed. This attack cannot be critical if the initial target survives, places a guaranteed true fear debuff on all enemies for one turn. So that's basically uh, what you want to, to do with him. The only problem with him, in my opinion at least, is that it's pretty hard to make a team for Arena with four Sacred Order champions. Now, the main reason is you might not have the best support from here. I'm not saying you cannot make one. You can definitely do. But I don't think it's going to be as easy as some people might think. Yes, we have Cardial Venus, Cupidus. We have a lot of awesome champions in here. A lot of them, they tend to be a bit better for PvE nowadays. And uh, yeah, we have Cardinal, which is going to be a very solid option for, um, for Arena, you know. Mordecai for increased attack. Uh, not many options to put the increased attack. Uh, to offer you like an insane uh, amount of support like there's no duchess in here no cfi etc you know you know what i mean so it's gonna be a bit harder to uh, make a full team with him for the high-end arena now for the lower tiers of arena guys uh, i feel like with cardinal more the kai for increased attack and just another random uh, another random sacred order they can absolutely demolish enemies you know cardinal is still a viable uh, strategy but we're gonna try that as well and with his a2 he has an aoe attack right he can ignore some defense if they have no buffs uh he can increase his damage if the target has any debuffs or buffs the problem again is that uh that increased attack it will be pretty mandatory for him to smack uh smack some serious damage you know and i was talking with seth about it and uh he really thinks that he's going to be way more busted than sickfront in terms of damage so i'm looking forward to try him today and see what sort of uh, insane numbers we're getting from uh, from the champion you know but he is a faction unity of course you want him at its full potential you need four sacred order champions in the team two x sacred you guys know the drill with that it's pretty simple the chances to summon epic or legendaries i mean the chances to summon legendaries doubles the chances to summon epics gets decreased a bit because you can only summon epics or uh, legendaries from sacreds hopefully Hopefully, I'm going to get him. I'm actually going to open my sacreds for uh, for that. Keep in mind, next week, we might have a 1 plus 1 on a sacred shards uh, uh, at the beginning of the week. We did not have a guaranteed just yet. So I initially thought that they will make a guaranteed on uh, Autorian this weekend from Ancients. But it seems like uh, that's not happening yet. Maybe they will be doing it next week. Maybe they're going to do it from sacreds instead. And we're going to slap ourselves for summoning our sacreds this weekend but either way i just want to make you guys alert so you know you know what things could potentially happen so heading over to news right here you're going to be able to vote for two different things community choice award so you can vote for uh, your favorite content creator if if i'm if i'm the one feel free to vote for me if no vote for whoever you guys uh, like the most show them some support then we have the Community Week's sneak peek, which was a bit of a, a bit of a teaser for uh, uh, what they're doing with the uh, with the whole event. But if you are clicking right here, you should be prompted to vote. So this is the voting for content creators, guys. You have that option as well. Now, I really thought that the other one is in game as well. Maybe I need to restart the game because I haven't done it today for the news to pop. If no, uh, if you go to their Discord, you're gonna 
be prompted to this uh, link right here where you can actually vote. So we have three days and 21 hours left to vote for his A3. Now the A3 actually looks pretty, pretty interesting. And then slowly we're going to vote for the A2, the A1, the passive. And then we'll be like, okay, this is the champion. Now, in order to vote, you need to be a um, verified player. So uh, you will need your in-game ID and your uh, in-game nickname. So my in-game ID is this one right here. Let's copy paste it and uh, head over right here, put the ID. And I don't think I can copy paste the, the nickname, but I think, I think this might be the one. Let's see. If not, I'm going to have to, to check it out to make sure that is, uh, is right, you know, because uh, it might be case sensitive. It might not. So it's Johnny AK 47. No hacks in here. We're just Johnny AK 47. So let's not uh, eat any of uh, our letters. So that will allow us to vote now, guys. The skills are pretty interesting. Now, one thing that I do want to kind of like mention, the first skill is damage focus. Attacks one enemy, will ignore stone skin buffs. If this attack kills the target, fills this champion's terimeter by 50%. I do not think that I can vote for that without knowing multipliers. Like, what if it's going to be an Eilil 2.0? You know, like, I don't want that. And uh, I don't think it's going to be very interesting just to ignore stone skin and nothing else. You know, like, just take a bomber and ignore the stone skin and call it a day. If it doesn't hit hard enough, it's just not going to be able to kill anybody, you know, without ignore defense and stuff like this, ignore shield, uh, just ignoring the stone skin is just not enough, unfortunately. Then, we have the defense focus. Places to intercept stacks on a target ally. Yes, you heard that right, intercept is a new type of a buff, guys. And it's actually insane, PvE, PvP, overall is just insane. But that is for a defense focus champion. So. On top of that, he will place increased defense and a shield buff on all allies for two turns. Very, very solid. The value of the shield is proportional to this champion's defense. Again, we don't know the multipliers for uh, uh, the shield, but it will be based on the defense. So uh, let's just say it's going to be something like UDK, Helicat, not really the level of Valkyrie, you know? Then, each intercept stack will block one attempt at placing a crowd control debuff on a champion. Even if it is specified in the enemy skill that the debuff itself cannot be blocked. Massive, okay? This is absolutely massive, guys. That's what Intercept does. So this includes stun, sleep, freeze, provoke, fear, true fear, petrification, and ship debuffs. So basically, if you're putting this buff on your teammates, you can only put it on one teammate at a time, right? Like, unless you're using the skill more often, very fast, you know, with refresh accessories. Then, it cannot be crowd control. It cannot be polymorphed. That is just massive, okay? It's absolutely massive. Now, after the attempt, one intercept stack will be removed. And you can stack as many stacks of intercept as you want. So, I'll be very honest, without even moving over to the next skill, this is the one for me. It's just bringing something very unique, something that is going to be extremely effective in PvE, in PvP for everybody, right? The very first skill, the damage focus, is only arena oriented, and it might not even be strong enough to be used in arena. So that makes no, uh, no sense. I do not want that. But the A2, I feel like it's going to be a massive powerhouse for every single player in Raid Shadow Legends. It doesn't matter if you started playing the game yesterday. It doesn't matter if you started playing the game five years ago. As simple uh, as that, you know. Then the support focus, guys. Revives all dead allies with 50% HP and 50% Termiter. Now, that is not a bad revive. We have tons and tons and tons of revivers in the game that can do that much, much better. They can actually even give you some buffs when they revive you. So this on its own... Is not spectacular. You have Apex doing this revive much, much better. Ursula the Mourner, she has a much better revive than him, for example. Then, places 5% uh, poison debuff on all enemies for two turns. The number of poison debuffs placed on each target is equal to the number of allies revived. So you only really land poisons if you revive. Which, again, 
Why would I do that? Why would I land poisons when I revive my uh, my teammates? It's a bit strange, you know. It's not it's not something that uh, we couldn't use, but it's very strange, and I don't think it's going to be extremely effective in uh, any particular content, you know. The defense based, in my opinion, sounds really, really unique, really strong for everybody. You're getting increased defense, you're getting a shield on all of your team, and you're getting this intercept uh, uh, stack on a target ally, you know. So I, I definitely think without without a question for me is is this one. Not sure what you guys uh, voted, I was going to say, but seems like we are able to see it right here on the screen. And support seems to be the, the choice. Like, honestly, think about it. You might think that you need a revival. You don't, guys. Okay, you have probably 50 to 100 revivers in this game now. Like, we have so many champions. Uh, Ignore Stone Skin is just not good enough because we do not know how good are the multipliers. We don't know uh, if he's going to have a, a good high base attack. And that kind of like puts me completely off from it. It doesn't ignore uh, anything else except that Stone Skin. So it's not going to be anywhere closer to a Georgit or even an Ilil. So uh, that really puts me off with it. That's the reason why I went with the defense based choice. I feel like defense based champions are tanky. Uh, maybe he's going to deal damage too. Maybe he's not. It doesn't really matter. But as long as uh, we are getting something very unique and uh, impactful for, uh, for, uh, for the players, you know, I think is a, is a good thing. Seems like you can go from here directly to the community awards, guys. And uh, you're going to be able to vote for every, every single thing uh, in here, you know, fan art of the year. Uh, okay. So these are kind of like little uh, emojis and, uh, and stuff, you know. They look, they look pretty nice. So we have a, an, an Arbiter right there. We have Yumeko and Karato. That looks pretty cool, actually. We have Gala Longbraids, which looks nice. Uh, we have uh, Son Wukong, I think, if I'm not mistaken, right here. That almost looks like a 3D printer. Then we have uh, another Arbiter with uh, Gallic and uh, his papa having a fight in there. And then we have Taras right here. They actually look pretty, pretty cool. I'm not, I'm not even sure who, who I should vote for, though. I like this one with Arbiter and uh, the the two orcs, you know, that looks pretty, pretty nice. Gala Longbraids looks uh, pretty awesome in here as well, but I think I'm going to give it to this one. So you can vote like this, then you can just move to the to the next uh, category and uh, vote in there again. Vote for a single nominee in each category. So what is this uh, meme of the year? Okay. This, this is something that we need to have. Mom, I wish dad was with us this Christmas. I know, darling. But that is working hard doing three dungeon timers events for his fusion. Okay, that's a <laughs> that's actually too good. This this might be the winner without even checking the, the rest. That's actually too good. I was a terror in arena back in my day. This is good too. Short Tormin. <laughs> Let's get you to bed. <laughs> the immunity gear. He was super powerful. Uh, in the very first one or two weeks, till people started using immunity, you know. But <laughs> this is actually a good one as well. I like it. What's this one? Plaria making breakfast for their children. KL <laughs> having all the good stuff. <laughs> and Atel, uh, Elhane and Gallic having <laughs> the leftovers. <laughs> That's pretty much a, a good thing too, actually. Yeah. He, he's, he's always, like, KL is always, like, the, the superstar of the show. Even though Gallic is the... the the image of the game, right? It's crazy, actually, thinking about it. Like, uh, Atel, she's always being, uh, being done dirty, you know? Okay. Trojan horse with the primals, and then you have all the... <laughs> you have all the trashy champions, yeah? Looks pretty, uh, pretty good as well. Okay, Sifi, Rotos, and UDK, they definitely hate, hate him. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to beat him, man. And uh, Raid content creators trying to produce a video guide for Hard Fire Night 10. Team is only 62% win rate. Waiting for your mods to improve your team. Run takes 49.3 minutes. Deciding to just upload the sharp pull video. I mean, the thing with Fire Night 10. Uh, I've seen quite a, few, quite a few teams out there that are so, so bad. And uh, they've been advertised as 100% as win rate. You know, they're not, you know. And that's why I feel like the last time when I made a video talking about the Fire Knight, uh, I explained why the new blessing will just not work without a shield and uh, why you need to have a shield in there. And it does work with the shield. 
but you need to have a shield. If not, that team will never be 100% win rate. Like, I have some disgusting stats on my team for the Fire Knight. I have a thick shield on them, okay? And before, before the blessings got uh, rebalanced and you're getting all the stats in them, I used to fail sometimes because my Krutraxa, that has a massive shield on it, uh, then she has like 3.3k defense. She has like 50k plus HP. And with increased defense, she was still getting hammered by the boss at a 4-star awakening. So, knowing that from my own experience, when I, I saw a few teams with no shield and stuff claiming a 100% win rate, I was like, hell no, that's, that's not even true. But guys, this is, just, uh, this is just too good. This is taking uh, the win. The very first one is just a very, very good, uh, very good one. I like it, yeah. So, you can do this as well. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to vote for literally everything in here. But either way, guys, you have quite... Uh, Quite a few different options in here, so make sure you guys head over and vote. Uh, I'm not sure if they're giving, uh, doing any giveaways or stuff like that, but it's fun to see something like this. I actually had a good laugh with the, with the memes, but I appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Much love, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.